Hello and welcome to Rugby Connection round two of the Six Nations review. We start off in Cardiff where Wales for in our few years remain undefeated against Scotland. France holding their own at home against Ireland and lastly poor Italy getting absolutely decimated by England. But we start off in Cardiff for the Doddy Weir Cup. Wales versus Scotland 20 points to 17 to Wales. Yay! I was there. Great game. Lots of talking points. Starting off with the obvious of Finn Russell's yellow card. Like you couldn't write, you, you generally couldn't write that after last week. <laughs> oh yeah, it was definitely a yellow though. Like I think we it was. I, everyone's like saying he was reaching for the ball, but he was in no realistic position no. to get the ball. Arguably, Hogs' attempt in the first five minutes was also a yellow. I thought yeah, it, was, well, it was definitely not a knock on. It was definitely a penalty and probably should have been a yellow. Just before we proper go into the game, the last one, the hat, the shoulder. Uh, yeah. Player was. I need to go over it properly again and TikTok will be out about it. But in my opinion, the other player is bringing him down slowly, but it is. He's never looking to wrap. So, in my opinion, definitely a yellow could be a red, but I would lean towards yellow because there wasn't much force in it either. Okay. Well, anyway, apart from all the discipline going out the window, basically, this game, it was a good game. I mean, it was 14 all at half time. It was absolutely fantastic to see Darcy Graham getting his 11th try and only 24 caps for Scotland. The boy is on fire this season. It was the um, such a good game, wasn't it? It was. It was. Like you, it, was it was one of those ones. I mean, it was very weird. For, <laughs> I was winding up a lot of Scottish people during this game, as you could well imagine. Um, but it was like I was kind of I was like it's Scotland win. I'm not annoyed. It's been a the whole the whole game. There was anyone could have won at any point during the whole game, and then yeah. the last minute a last minute drop goal. Well, not last minute, but a drop goal to win the game by Dan Bigger, who has won his uh, well, John Dan Bigger and Jonathan Davis on their hundredth international cap. So bravo, yeah, too. very well deserved for both men. Um, the Dan Bigger one didn't feel as celebrated because obviously he was captain, so he leads the team out anyway. But yeah. when Jonathan Davies came on, the principality erupted. And it was oh, just something to see him back. Yeah, it did. Because like, the announcer obviously says, it. and joining Dan Bigger for his 100th international cap. Jonathan Davies! And, but no, the atmosphere was amazing. People were lovely, apart from the couple behind me, till, until the 79th minute. She got lucky <laughs> and just she just got really annoying. But you know when you get over-annoying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I went anyway, back from the game. Did you? Yeah. So if it was with Lucy, if I, if I, if Wales won, she has to clean my flat. Uh, and uh, then it, if well, Scotland won, I had to clean a car. But I'm getting a nice clean flat in the next few days. Nice. Um, I mean, hey, you need the clean flat. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be. You you need the clean. I'm moving out in a week. When we say clean flat, I mean it's pack up the flat and then be fucking off. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people said that Liam Williams won the game. I don't think he did. I think I Liam Williams was immense. I thought he was just there, and that's not me. Be- that's not because I don't like. Like I know he's a good player, and the stats were insane this week. But I just felt in the stadium, he was just sort of. You know how, like, when you looked for a specific player in person, sense. Yeah. I wanted to see. Right, go on then. Show me something in person. And he just. I don't know. He was just. <laughs> He was the mo- well. I thought Liam Williams should have been man of the match, in my opinion. I thought the most carries by any player. He was winning yeah. high balls. He had Hog wrapped around his little finger. He did this game. He had Hog, Hog and Russell from the performance. I mean, Darcy Graham, arguably the best player in the Scotland squad right now. I, I think. Um, form wise, yeah. Yeah, form wise. But Hog and Russell, um, Hog and. Yeah, Hog and Russell kind of going back a couple of years when they are one week amazing, one week a bit poor. I wouldn't even say. I thought Finn actually played all right, and then the yellow card, and it just all went to pop. Yeah. But, but Hog, I wouldn't say there. Hog wasn't fantastic by, by any means. He was not fantastic, but he wasn't rubbish. He was just there, like nothing happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, speaking of not, speaking of nothing, and it actually surprised me, Lucy Summit. Is awful at the moment. And nothing. He's done. He didn't do anything. He he, he should have like great try and great strength by Darcy Graham, but he <laughs> should have tackled him into touch. 
Yeah, I think that I think it was a rugby pass post on Instagram when the five foot seven Darcy Graham out muscles a sixty LRZ. <laughs> exactly. I I think I think Russell's on awful. Cuthbert had a good game. It was nice to see Alex Cuthbert back. It was really good to see him back. Um, I am st- trying to look at the positives because obviously like, Scotland's discipline effectively lost us the game and some of the decision making at the end because there was more panic station that let us down but I mean Hamish Watson made all 17 of his tackles so he's now up to 180 tackles not missed which is insane Darcy Graham as we've already mentioned is on fantastic form and I do oh, think I, 12 I thought was good Sione Tupolota was good again Unfortunate that he had to come off because of the old card. I don't think that was his fault. It was just somebody needed to come in and control it. And I think Pierre Schumann has climbed down his place to start. I think he's just got that little bit something special over Rory Sutherland. And the one player that just needs to completely bugger off, in my opinion, is Xander Fragerson. I don't. I just don't get it. His discipline is terrible. Referee telling him to let go, and he's still trying to think he could test his luck. It's just stupid stuff. But before I go, before we answer any questions, I have got a funny story for you lads. Well, you'll find it funny. I thought it was a bit hurtful. Um, so I was just about at the gates of Principality, and I seen Scotland legend Gavin Hastings walking towards me. So no. naturally, I even asked him, I said, can I please get a photo? And for some reason, he just snapped, went, no, and then walked away. Fucking <laughs> 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 rude. Genuinely, I said, I said this is, to Sean. Had he said... On Valentine's Day, that is peak rejection right there. Big rejection, yeah. But it was just, like, if he said, no, I'm running late, or no, I'm busy, fine. But the fact that it was just a flat out, no, and like, like I shouted, no. I was like, all right, dick. <laughs> never so trust bad. the Scottish uh, <laughs> that's why Hogan Parsons better simple <laughs> anyway, this is like this is like Kyle's who is it story who Carly is Beale Kenny, <laughs> Carly. this is like Kyle's Kenny B story aye. it's personal now but anyway lads who, who doesn't support Scotland and Wales questions Uh, yeah, Murray, I just asked you about the atmosphere. How was the atmosphere in the Principality? It's it was fantastic. It was brilliant. It was great to see. I mean, we're going to say, I think this this whole tournament, it's great to see fans back and it does make a big difference. Mm. Um, fair play to the to Wales coming out to enter Sandman. That got a big praise from me. <laughs> um, Bread of Heaven is it's loud. The this well I was a bit disappointed, I was a bit disappointed in the... I was a bit disappointed with the anthem. It was still like very moving. It's just it wasn't like the best go at it. I don't know why. I was in some Irish mm. bar in Edinburgh singing my heart out. No, that's fair. I just I, I don't know. The last few times it's been down, it gave me goosebumps, and then this one was a bit. Yeah, okay. Yes, Harv. Hmm. I have a question for our resident Welshman. No, not oh, yeah. oh yeah. By the way, I am well. I should. I should. Before as you said this, I'm not actually Scottish. I was. A bit confused last week with my um anyway and, so. and my nation identity, so I am Welsh again, by the way. All right, where's it going? Sorry, I'm eating my dinner. Um <laughs> Simeon. Good scrum. Uh, it's, 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 it's good, it's good. Big up, um, big up Stephen. Anyway, um <laughs> Simeon, do you think this is a turning point for Wales or do you just think it's a bogey result? I think the way Wales I thought. Wales played a good game. I thought there were potentially more tries left out there, but Scotland defended very well. Like Cuthbert nearly scored, and there were a few other chances we kind of bottled. I think that is a better. You've got the players they brought in. I thought were better suited in there. I'd get rid of Zama next week, and if Adams is or not next week when we play England, I'd have Cuthbert and Adams on the wings. I wouldn't have Zama in there. He's not done anything. Um, but I think if Wales can just keep level head, Wales have possession again, and it show when Wales have possession they can attack. Um, so I think they, they, I don't think it's bogus all because I think it's a very good Scotland team. Scotland put a good fight up, 
but we'll we'll see where it comes to England, which I think it's going to be a weird game because you've got two teams there with young and unexperienced teams where no one really knows what's happening with either of them. All right, question for Murray now. Um, does this put a dent in, you know, Scotland's hopes to be one of the better Six Nations in quite a while? Because, um, you know, with five games, every game does count. Yeah, it definitely does. And that's probably the best thing about the Six Nations, that each every game now definitely does matter. It's not, there's not, oh, it doesn't matter. But um, I said, when we did our preview, I said that I want Scotland to be in control of our own destiny. And our own fate. Uh, I still think we could do that. Definitely. Obviously, the Grand Slam hopes are gone, but... Only Lyra France now? Yeah, we'll get into France in a bit. But um, No, I don't think... Obviously, it sucks to lose. But, you know what? The, the team are probably still the best shape I've seen in years. So, they'll, they'll go over next week. They'll rebuild. They'll talk about what needs fixed and probably give it a good go against France and Murrayfield. So I don't think it affects it too much. It just means... No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, Sean, for me? Yeah, this, this is my last question. It is for you, Simeon. How uh, how hated were you by Scottish fans in the bar on, on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I, you know what? I've got a couple good stories. Like, I've got actually one or two good stories I think you guys should know. So um, shout out to Katie and Lucy, who... Well, Katie looked like she wanted to murder me during that game because I was just sat there just going, imagine being Scottish, honestly, imagine. There were loads of Welsh fans in the bar as well, so it kind of helped. But um, yeah, we we weren't liked. And then I was actually working. I was um, a pub working um, afterwards. And I, I we were allowed to wear rugby tops when the Six Nations are awesomes on. So I just like, fuck, I'm going to wear a Welsh shirt, right? And there were, obviously I'm from Caffili, there were eight blokes from Caffili in there. Oh, wow. So they were, they were, they were, they were the best. Pardon? All roads lead home. Aye. And they were asking me where the best club is to go in Edinburgh, and they were 50-year-old men, and I told them to go to Why Not, so I hope they were there. But um, yeah, <laughs> drunk Scottish people came up to me and went, you, you had a fight, I had a fine win today, boys, but Scotland <laughs> oh. still got it in us. It was basically oh. like a bunch of drunk Murrays coming up to me. It was great. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's fine because at the end of the day, Cymru and the Wales for the Six Nations, the trip, we've still got it, boys. We've still got it. I, um, said, I said we'd get a random win somewhere, and that's the downfall of us, Scott. You, you did trigger me to the point I was actually going to leave our chat. <laughs> I swear. You <laughs> caught not. <laughs> I'll, there is a box because people wind me like the person I mentioned behind me um, triggered me to the point I just I didn't want to talk about the game. I was still having fun in Cardiff, but I didn't want I didn't need to talk about the game. I was there. I know what happened. I mean, now now you know how it feels last week, Murray. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. I had to turn my phone off. Everything just calm down for about yeah. an hour. I was ready yeah. to put my feet for a wall. So I went, I literally just got out of the ground and I was always still a bit fizzing because of the result. And first thing I see is this twat Welsh flag go lower with the score and I, I just went ape shit. So I apologise for that, but yeah. Where did you drink in Cardiff? Uh, oh, I can't even remember the name, but the, t- the bar service was terrible. Uh, it was, my pub. It's Cardiff. <laughs> Yeah, it's Cardiff. <laughs> we did go back to the local clubhouse in Kevin Kribber, which was lovely. Oh, nice. Very nice, sir. Very cheap. Yeah, and it, how, isn't alcohol cheap in South Wales? Yeah, in South Wales, in Cardiff, it's not. <laughs> it is. It was cheaper than bloody Edinburgh, I'll tell you that much for one. Alcohol is cheap <laughs> anywhere that's not my area. <laughs> no, um, the, the service was probably where at. And Cardiff was very disappointing. Got scarred better? For pace, yeah. Because they've actually got someone just purely pouring drinks because they know it's going to be busy. That's like me. That's what I was doing. I'm sorry. Yeah. They had this bar, I can't remember, I generally cannot remember the name of it, had people just doing it like normal service. Like there was no rushing, there was no panicking or anything. I was like, oh my 
Should have oh. got you behind the bar, Murray. You'd have sorted them out. Yeah, but I don't do the bar anymore for reasons because I can't be bored. Anyway, on okay. to anyway. on to France. France versus Ireland. Sean, you were there. Yep. Um, what? What? I think it was a great game. Honestly, um, I I just want to just before I get into the actual game, I just want to say that I was looking up being there as I said, as you said, Murray. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I don't think I've actually been in a, ever in a better atmosphere across any sports. Um. It was surreal. The French fans, when they get involved, are immense. Like they, they literally scream their lungs off. Like a little blue singing the national anthem in the middle. Like it's it, like crazy stuff. Like it's it is a, it's it's something worth doing for any fan, even if you're a neutral. Like the French, they're they're crazy. I'd say they would have been fairly annoyed if they lost and probably a bit rude. But luckily, <laughs> they weren't rude, so everything was fine. Um, but there's some they're they're, they're a class outfit the French. <laughs> there's some funny stories actually I'll get onto in a few minutes but just getting onto the game um, France were I think Ireland were just out muscled basically um, I think France deserving winners obviously clear no doubt about that um, like DuPont scored that opening try with inside two minutes it was what 19-7 at half time it, it was very worrying at that stage um, but obviously can't skip over the, the Hanson try the bring it back 10-7 oh, oh, yes. so good. Mac is a sexy boy yeah, what a try that was. Like, I mean, individual brilliance from Mac. And in fairness, it was a great kickoff from Carberry as well. Um, he gave him a good chance. Rugby Media's Rugby Dumb article on Mac Hansen's try. <laughs> Thanks, Simi. Appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm your hype man today, honestly. Hype man, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually, you know, look, there was a lot of pressure on Joey Carberry coming into the game. Sexton wasn't there. The captain of the squad. Um, Carberry hasn't had a lot of minutes behind them, but I genuinely thought he had a pretty okay game. But one thing that absolute grind in my gears was bringing Connor Murray on with 20 minutes left Gibson Park played a pretty good game I thought look he made some mistakes he was a bit poor like for maybe five ten minutes spell but he was he he basically set up two tries himself and he scored one of them like you bring it on Murray slowing everything down throwing crap passes I, I was fit to literally I, we were raging basically <laughs> when Murray brought Murray on um I do. I feel sorry for Carty. Look, he tried to throw a, a good pass, which kind of needed to happen um, in that final minutes. But like you know, he only got a minute off the bench. Like, how much can he really do at that stage? Either leave Carberry on or give him at least ten minutes. Um, and then look, I think the kind of turning point, controversial moment was Ireland deciding to um, take three rather than go for the corner when the score was 27-21 to France. So, I mean, I I kind of felt at the time take your three. And like we did have a chance to win at the end, so like it's not like everything was lost. Like if we went for the line out and missed it, came away with nothing, and France go up and score a penalty, we would have been done at that stage. We would no coming back from that. It would have been like ten points or something. So, but then, sorry, prefacing another key moment was when France for some reason kicked the ball away. Ireland got the ball back on eighty minutes, and Hugo Keenan decided to try and kick it away at the end. I mean, that was a bit of a nostalgia, like O'Gara, O Nine Lions thing. I, I, I don't know why he kicked it away. Look. I feel sorry for the guy. He was under pressure. Didn't know what. Probably didn't know what to do. But uh, that was that was just a, a brain fade from Hugo. Okay, if they're still doing those top five rugby videos, what the Australian thing, if that would be up there. Oh, <laughs> they're <laughs> but, brilliant. Those are. Yeah, but uh, no, look, great game. Um, I thought someone a few positives from Ireland. I thought Ty Byrne had an immense game. That fifty twenty two that he kicked was surreal. Up there was Shane Dallin Hunts of Connacht. Um, he had a brilliant game. She she ended very well when he came on, and I thought Gibson Park was all right. But yeah, great game. And then <laughs> Jaminet was brilliant. Waki, Jalanj, Aldri, they were brilliant for France. Um, and France's scrum was was pretty was pretty class. Um, so that's pretty much the game. But and then just quickly a few brief stories. <laughs> so there was <laughs> so in front in front of me at the game there was this lad this group of like French lads, they were probably mid twenties, I'd say. There was a fellow wearing a leather jacket, and he had this sticker of Anthony Jalanch on his back shoulder, sitting right in front of us. And this guy, this guy was off his head, mental, basically. He was like every time, like France won a penalty, he'd be standing up, jumping his seat, turning back to me and the lads, like ah, and all this, like. And he was proper triggering us. And so I don't know if you saw the Dupont. He kicked the ball through, and Ty Byrne kind of brushed off him a bit, like hardly touched him, and Dupont oh. dived. Did yeah, you see that? I, remember I saw the. Yeah, I did see that. There was nothing in it. It wasn't even a penalty. It wasn't given a penalty, thankfully, Angus Gardner, who actually thought I had a good game. Um, the French fans, basically, when they saw the replay, slow motion, they're all like, boo, boo. Basically, they were like that clip. Send them, them off, soft. send them off. 
Get yeah, him off the field! Exactly. Get, get <laughs> there was nothing in it. They're they're so biased. Like this guy Jalanchi, this oh we call him the the Jalanchi super fan. He basically turned around to us and he goes with the very limited English that he has. Even though he didn't say much throughout the game, he was like. How much you paid the ref? A lot of this, like, oh. <laughs> he was, this guy was a cracker. That was not a very good French accent. I'm sorry, Sean. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I apologize. No, Anyone offended? <laughs> I apologize offending any of our French listeners. <laughs> but uh, also, there's also a couple sitting in front of us, and for some reason, it, it, it seemed like they'd never seen anyone of another nationality ever. Basically, any time we shouted, come on, Ireland, they just turn around and start laughing at us just for no reason whatsoever. Like, it they was so bizarre. Insane. The French fans are absolutely <laughs> insane. They are. They are. It was actually, in fairness, it was good crack the next day, like walking around Paris. And was, I stopped a couple of times, but these like kind of semi elderly French men and come up to say, you know, hey, look, you know, you do better next year and all this kind of crack. They're good. They're good crack, the French. Like, um, Are you allowed then, to say what that random French guy said to you? Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Thank I'm going to say. So, much, <laughs> yeah. so, so basically, <laughs> I go into political. Dro- yeah, no, not the political. This is just funny. So basically, I go to pick, uh, drop off my bag um because we didn't want to carry it around the whole day there's this fella who does like painting or whatever not painting like sketches of your face or whatever he's sitting there and he sees him wearing my iron gear he's like french kind of french not pure friend like kind of french foreign if that's okay to say i don't know but uh, he's sitting there and he sees me with iron cap he's like oh I don't, I don't. Cancel. <laughs> yeah cancel offload we're being cancelled again <laughs> um, so he's there sitting he's like Ireland, and then and then we're like no 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 we're walking on very briskly and then he just says out of the blue chucky our law like what? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most bizarre thing ever. <laughs> For all our non-Irish listeners, based listeners, it means basically like our day will come. It's a very Republican Irish phrase, but it's so bizarre that he said that. <laughs> um, uh, oh, and then actually, last story very quickly. We were late. We missed the anthems, unfortunately, to the game, which is a pity because the French anthem is meant to be surreal. That was very sad. Literally just got in time for kickoff. But the reason oh, why I saw you running, weren't you? Yeah, the reason was because. We, we went to leave Notre Dame a uh, good like probably good two hours two an hour and a half two hours before the game queuing I see these people queuing and I was like oh geez all the Ireland fans are queuing for the pub or whatever and they're like it wasn't the pub it was basically so the train station the metro the one we go you had to get to to go to the Stade de France was closed so you couldn't do it so you had to go to the one that everyone was queuing for but they were queuing for a lift so there's about 100 Ireland fans 150 Ireland fans queuing for a lift that could hold about five people and it going so slowly and there was literally a and there was a drunk fella from Mayo. He was about 60. Didn't know where he was. And he was basically, he got it eventually. He was in front of us. He got in the lift. He started jumping up and down in the lift. Like just jumping up and down. Like what it nearly broke. I could be John from my club. <laughs> I could probably was him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy from fucking Mayo. <laughs> yeah, that, it, was, it was bizarre. People were trying to push into the lift. Like was, at one stage, there was like 20 people in, in like trying to push into the lift. But it wouldn't go, sure. It's way too heavy. Anyway, that's why we were late. It was bizarre. We were very stressed, but great game. Go to the Stade de France if you get a chance. Um, brilliant game. Right. Can I, can I have a first question? Um, yeah, go on. Sean, unfortunate, um, unfortunate result, but yeah. um, does, the, does the closeness of the game sort of reflect how tightly contested this Six Nations is? Um, yeah, I think so. Because, I mean, I think everyone kind of... A lot of there was a lot of talk that people said that this clash could potentially decide the championship. Now, obviously, not for definite, but like just with the form the two sides were in coming into it. Um, I, I do feel that, like going a bit off topic here, that Ireland probably would have, I think, could have won that game if we had Johnny Sexton starting at 10, to be honest. Um, but I do, I think that I, I, I think you're right, Harvey. I think the game definitely reflects like just how close everyone is. Like, Ireland, like, I mean, okay, obviously, not, not last week, Wales were trounced by Ireland. Uh, sorry, Simon. <laughs> but it no, was fine last week. I was Scottish. Now I'm Welsh again. Ah, but... uh, uh, you cheeky yeah, fella. <laughs> like the English. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think it, it definitely is a close championship. It's brilliant. That's what you want. It's hard to believe France haven't won it in what, like 12 years, which is bizarre considering everything. But anyway, yes, that's my answer. <laughs> last question from me. Um, yeah. How many dartboards are going to have Hugo Keenan's face on it? In Ireland, a lot, <laughs> a lot. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I think Hugo. Look, it was one error. He barely makes any errors. Look, it was 
it was unfortunate that it was happening at a crucial part of the game and it happened at any other stage obviously you wouldn't be mad but look it happened we got to move on I honestly look it was gutting that we lost but honestly I wasn't as disappointed as some people were online like people were proper triggered I wasn't as triggered I thought it was encouraging for how we did like with a 10 who very little minutes as I said and yeah that kind of thing I was <clears throat> yeah. I was the ass. Oh, you you said you probably would have felt you could have won at F six and was at the realm. But do you think yeah. that Ireland can compete without them? Do you think this was a good sign that you can do a job without Sexton? Yeah, I think so. I think we probably needed it, regardless of whether we wanted it or not. Especially if we wanted to win the game, we probably needed this. Like this is a, that was a massive test for Carby. His first Six Nations start, I thought he did pretty okay. Like the experience he'll get a game from that is is unreal. I think he like you know, a lot of people said that the attack kind of died a bit when he came on <clears throat> in off the bench against Wales in the last twenty minutes. I think they're probably right, but I think um, that Saturday showed that it it, it wasn't just completely relied on him. We were just out muscled really by the pack and. Um, I think I think that's kind of why we weren't as dominant um, as we were last week. Um, just another one for me. Do you think mm-hmm. is France going to win the Grand Slam? Is it going to be a Grand Slam job? Tough one. I I don't want them to obviously because if they lose a game, it gives Ireland a chance. Are they? They could well do it, but it's hard to see. Like you know, last year I honestly thought France were going to win the championship last year, and then they're beating my England. Um, and weren't they beating my Scotland as well? Yeah. 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 They yeah were. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean. It's, it can really go any either way, but it, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised by either outcome, a Grand Slam or either someone else winning it or France winning the championship. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, question from me, Boyle. Mm. Um, Boyle. Is Matt Hansen the best player in Ireland? And how was your McDonald's in Paris? <laughs> Uh, first question, Matt Hansen is undoubtedly the best player in Ireland. <laughs> no more, no more there. Yeah. No, no more needed. No, no more debate there. McDonald's is brilliant, honestly. You know, look at you, you do feel a bit guilty. You know, you're going to another another country. You know, you want to dine the local cuisine, and then you go to McDonald's. But these wedges they had, it was like two o'clock in the morning, and had these wedges. Honestly, they're better than any Irish deli wedges you can get. You can't get them in Ireland. I don't know where else you can get them. They were superb. I mean. I love them. So, yeah, McDonald's is brilliant. <laughs> did you drink? Did you find any Guinness out there? No, no, no Guinness. Stayed completely sober this time. It was uh, probably better off. <laughs> but, no, yeah. it was... Uh, give, yeah, it no, free, give it two and a half weeks, boy. You won't be completely sober then. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, he's got the week with me. He's got the week over me first, so oh yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah. yeah Harvey, you're gonna actually kill him off two well one week when he gets a week off. And <laughs> when, then when, we, again. when we head to Leitrim, I'm I'm gonna kill a Leitrim man in his hometown. As you fucking should, boy. And I'm gonna kill well, he's gonna be drunk at the Connell game, he's gonna be drunk in Glasgow, and he's gonna be drunk at the club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it already, boys. <laughs> love you, <Sean. laughs> love you boys. <laughs> all right, that's all for me. Thanks, boys. Um, so we complete Paris. We now move to Rome, where Italy didn't hold up. Let's be honest, didn't hold up their end of the bargain against England. But we've got our resident English to talk about a positive this week. So, Harv, welcome back. Yeah. So, um, no, I'll try this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I unfortunately um, did not see the game. I was uh, out all of Sunday, but I have caught up on it. I was um, out in Ryslip, McGovern Park. Um, but Up the Exiles. Up the Exiles. <laughs> um, the exiles. But, <laughs> but no, um, you know, again, strong first half display. Marcus Smith, absolutely brilliant player. Good as you like. Um, I'm pretty sure the other two tries, the other three tries, sorry, were Jamie George and Cole Sinclair. I'm pretty sure I was a fifth, but I mean, yeah, there I, was five yeah. I didn't watch it. Um, but no, um, I think the first half, we, I think the first half, to be honest, was just, it was just proceedings. I think this is what we should have done. This is the game plan all along, just to get the, just to pile up the points in Italy. Obviously, if you're a bit of a different side, we're not looking at like a, you know, we're not looking at cricket, we're not looking at a cricket score here. We are looking at, you know, somewhere in the 30s, 40s. Um, and no, 21, 21 nil up at half time was kind of what I was expecting. And then, you know, not scoring since the twenty fourth minute, uh, the forty fourth minute in the second half as well. I don't know if that showed a little bit of a um, little bit of um, poor from England. Um, I don't I, know. I think 
it, it, was, it was difficult because I think, of course, Italy are holding their own a lot better than they were. Um, but it is just a little bit concerning that, you know, the the, um, the regularity of the scores weren't coming through. Um, needless to say, it's a, it's a game that we came into knowing we could win. We did win it quite convincingly as well. Probably better than France did. Um, so it definitely shows hope. And to be honest, it's a bit more of a confidence boost uh, after the Scotland game as well. So um, I'm happy with that one. Uh, unfortunately, I've got no funny stories to tell you because I wasn't there uh, or... or I wasn't even watching it myself. How was the uh, exile? Tell us about the exiles, Blake. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go on it. I'll glance at it quickly since this is a rugby podcast. But no, it's, it, it was it was a bit of a bugger of a journey, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's all one tube line, but it's about an hour, so I was asleep on the way back. Um, but no, it's a nice little stadium. If you're looking to watch some GA in London, uh, Rice Lip is a it's a lovely one. Uh, we've got a uh, a ten point win over the Mayo Hurlers, so uh, definitely not a bad shift. Um, but anyway, going back to rugby, um, just pure class from England. I think you know, wasn't the wasn't the best of wins we could have had. You know, it doesn't. I don't think it shows our our, our, our class and doesn't show probably the gap between us and Italy. Um, but a win's a win. I'll take it. Every game counts. Bonus point. What else can I say? That's fair. Um, I think because obviously you didn't watch it, so I'll have to kind of like fill it in. Italy, for me, it just seemed like they always they had something great planned, but nobody else knew the plan. They over-did, over-did, they overdid everything. They should have said yeah. or they, they, they nearly could have put up a really good game to England, and they had so much pet territory and possession. But yeah. it, give that team two years, and that will be different. Well, since you said it like that, I mean, uh, Rob Kearney was doing the like the Virgin Media side of the Six Nations, and he's basically saying like, like enough is enough. Like they're not holding up there into the bargain. You can't say it's a twenty-year experiment when, well, let's be honest, they haven't competed in those twenty years. Um, like do, 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 is now the time for a change, and I know it, we kind of keep bashing on it and I know that we are trying and they are getting there but like when when is enough enough I'm sorry I completely think Italy need to say did you see Portugal drew with Georgia yeah I did yeah. no I know and I, that just makes this argument <clears throat> more difficult because I think for me like you know you can't just take away you've got you have got to build right yeah. you know you're seeing you're seeing sides like Georgia and um Portugal closing the gap on tier one nations, you know, when do they deserve to be in there? But you can't just chuck Italy out, otherwise you're going to just propel them into a tier, into tier two, aren't you? You know, it's unfair on them. You know, everyone's talking about this promotion relegation thing for quite a while with the Rugby Europe Championship. I don't think it's fair. I And then you look at, and just bring it up, the under-20s, Italy beat England. At the exactly. top level, 20 points to... I'm sorry, 20 points. Six points to nil, which is the weirdest score going. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's quite a controversial game otherwise, but I'm not sure if that's uh, to do with the actual play itself. But, you know, I think for Italy, they can't, you can't just say they've had their run, we've got to expel them. Because not only... You know, they bought into that, to the Six Nations as well. They're investing in it. You can't just kick them out because you're and- losing the shareholder. And money, if you look at it from an economic standpoint, Italy make a lot of money because people want to go out to Rome and watch rugby. Because it's Rome, isn't it? I think the big thing, like, Lawrence Delalio mentioned it because he was on commentary, and it, it was a good point. So, like, obviously you've just touched on it, the under-20s are in a really good position right now after beating England. Um, obviously, we all know Benetton won the Rainbow Cup last season. Lawrence Delalio thinks that they need to bring it, go lower, get more schools playing it because they just don't. There's like a handful of schools that play rugby in Italy and there's just, it's very far in between. So I don't, I don't know. It's still that debate about what like you said as well, Harvard. Does Italy need another, another pro team? I think, I mean, what's it? I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the URC. I voice my concerns, you know, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I do think the South African team being there's a bit of a, it's 
bit, it's a bit nothing, to be honest. They can't if still want, do much in the league either. If you want 16 teams, two more Scottish teams, two more Italian teams. That's my view. You know, put Italian teams in relatively bigger cities where you can stadium share with, you know, uh, mid-sized football clubs. I think that's fair enough. Mm. And, you know, it would just help the grassroots of Italy come up because that's what they've needed. I mean, Stephen Varney, who did he play for at under-20s? Didn't play for Italy. What? Wales. Oh, the Wales of Scotland. I'm not sure. Tommaso Allen played for Scotland at under-20s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Monte Ioani is the least-looking Italian person I've ever seen. <laughs> no, but he's uh, played for New Zealand and Australia, isn't he? He's completely right. Jake, Jake Pelledri, I also uh, I think he's English as well. So Negri is you know, uh, from South Africa. I mean. Negri yeah, is from South I mean, Africa. Yeah. You know, Italy, Italy don't have their own. Italy don't have their own grassroots core. This is what you need to grow in Italy. This is what you need at lower levels, at school level, at club level. You know, seeing a more Italian game because. Benetton and um, Zabra, are they in the fuck of nowhere? Who's actually mm. going to go? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Benetton's near Venice, but it's not that near Venice. And then mm. it's Both Germany. North Italy. That, Both but, North Italy. That's what, that's they what I mean. They need a team in Rome. They need a team in Rome. You know, if... if it comes to big, though. The stadium. Yeah, if there's, a, if, there's, if there's a mid-sized stadium in Rome, which, I mean, what's it? The, the Stadio Olimpico is the only real big one, and it shares four teams... Two national teams and two football teams. Mm. They genuinely couldn't hold it. Plus, would they even set it out? <clears throat> no, of course they wouldn't. But this is what I mean. We need to, it, you know, the, the FIR need to really um, explore just different parts of Italy and where you're going to get a team in. Mm. Yeah, Basically, San Marino, if you have to. I mean, it's still technically Italy, is it? Is this, no, I think it's a long uh, country. They've got a fairly sized stadium out there. Place it in there, you know, they can make it their own. They can play, you know, they're one of the Italian team. This is what I mean. You know, you just have to grow it from the grassroots up. That's yeah. true. I don't yeah. mean to go Joe Brody rant on you, but the idea... <laughs> <laughs> they said it if it actually The production line finished it. They said if it actually said it today. But this yeah. is what I mean. I think it's. I think the FIR have got to discover their own roots. They're doing really well with the national team at the moment. The best they've done in quite a while. Yeah. If they have Parise, I'd say you know there might be, you know, maybe a little bit more. But They'd probably be winning the championship if they had Parise in fairness. Oh yeah. Uh, come on. Exactly. Yeah. They'd be, they're, they're, mm, like Brad's I think I'm the one that does it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but this is. But but this is what I mean. Italy just needs to. Build from the ground up. Uh, I don't mm. think there's anything wrong with England because we have a beautiful system with loads of schools, <laughs> loads of clubs. Um, but it's and, the same yeah. in Scotland. It's a great system in Scotland. It's not the best, though. Like, I told you, it's the, the mid, and that's not the best setup because our school it's level. Set, it's a good setup when you're in Edinburgh and Glasgow. No, yeah. no. Borders as well have a great setup, but school rugby in Scotland is fantastic, as you know, Simon. Aye. But, like, you know, the, the youth grades, like under twenties and all that, isn't great. It is a bit That's, weird. Yeah, I made that. I I said it to you as a joke, but it's, it is true. If you want to look for the ones for the future for Scotland, they're in the England under twenties. Because when we spoke to Andy Christie, that actually really shone my light, my eyes to it. He was in the under sixteens and then wasn't good enough for the under eighteens. So he went to England and then an English school wanted him and he grew there. And now Scotland went, like, back you come. And it's, we've, we've actually called it the Exile Project. You send all your good ones down south. Oh, the Exiles. It's, but it's generally like, it's so weird. Like, and it's again, like, stick to the grassroots and build it and up. Then there's, and, and then the there's the Welsh system where the schools aren't very good. But there's a huge focus on grassroots, like clubs and regional age grade. There's a huge, there's a, to be fair, I'll slag off Wales to the Cows Cup over a lot of the time, but the age grade system in Wales is a good system. You have your regions, you have like your Cardiff schools, so your school regions, and then you go into 
blues north, blues south. I'm just going on a card of base here. And under 16, then you go into a blues under 16, and then you blues under 18s, and then you feed into the other 20s Welsh squad. Sounds good. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. I don't know. There's a lot, a lot to talk about. Like, going forward. Because the under 16s, under 18s, Glasgow, Edinburgh, you don't hear anything about it. Not, it's not a big thing. The under 20s set up at Glasgow and Edinburgh. There's not, There's not one. That's why. There is. There is actually one, but it's very small. Mm. But it's more Just, like... I think, like, I think for us in like, England, um, you know, I think what's really, really good is every club plays in the pyramid. You know what I mean? You know, so you do get you do get the shuffle up, right? You know, and I, I, I might be coming from, you know, a, um, a position where I actually play for a fairly good club. My team isn't quite good, but every other age grade is actually really, really good. Um, but you know, there's five, there's five, um, 15s, there's five adult 15s. Um, you know, you know, and then there's under 18s, under 17s, you've got an age grade every single year, yeah. And that's what it that's what it's like in, in, in to be honest, a lot of clubs, yeah. And it's the same in lots like Clanbath Club in Wales has three first teams. I mean, obviously, Wales is a smaller population, but it's three first team clubs and age grade at everyone. Exactly, and I'm thinking, you know, you know, we've got that pyramid. I'm, I'm I think my our, our first fifteen somewhere like maybe fifth, sixth tier. So you know, like considering that's four tiers off professional level, mm. which you know is is definitely not. And bad. in England's big because there's so many more players and so many more teams. Exactly. So that's so basically that's what I'm saying. Italy needs a system that just feeds because currently. They're basically stealing other players from other nations, not on, you know, maybe just a little bit more than Scotland are from South Africa. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, Italy just Italy just need a system change and it will just help feed their national team. And that's basically all I have to say on the game. Uh, you know, if Italy wants to improve, because I do like Italy a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't know if it's great. Italy, but <laughs> I'm just uh, on a point there. Um, I, I do think that you are right, Harvey. And with the current team, there are there are too many players, as you mentioned, that are not Italian, basically. Um, well, look, I mean, that's kind of more of a world rugby problem as well. But um, I do think that it is starting to improve in Italy. I mean, I apologies, Murray, for the PCSD, but I think was it Italy's under eighteen side hammered Scotland last year? Probably. Yeah. I think it was completely a complete hammering, like seventy points to nil or something, something yeah. crazy, something like that massive. Bad, yeah. And that's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not digging a Scotland there. That's just like a point to prove that Italy, you know, and like with the under twenties beating England, like, I mean, it's getting better. I think Conor O'Shea did a lot. No, not to, I am biased in saying that with Conor O'Shea, he's Irish, come on. But he did, in fairness, he did a lot of work in terms of what he, his job. He put a lot failed. of school systems in. Yeah, he did. He, he built a lot of um, structures that are starting to help. Not complete. He was only there for a few years, but he did a lot of work that's starting to help them. So I think that's a good point. And then just to kind of link it all back, a question for Harry. I know you said you were finished talking about the game, but I know you didn't see it. But just considering the scoreline itself and from what you've heard about the performance, do you think that um, England will be... Obviously, they got the bonus point. Do you think England will be completely happy about that or that do you think that maybe it could have been better or are you a bit worried or what's the story there? I watched the game, so I don't really have a feeling about it. You know, a win's a win, but um, yeah, you know, frustrations. But there's always going to be frustrations in games. That's the Six Nations. Like, you know, yeah. you can never be. You, you know, some people are never truly pleased by any of the wins. So, I think, you know, five points is all we can ask for. Five points is the maximum, and we got the maximum. Mm. Let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. We got Wales in two weeks. Uh, you know, we can reform. It'll be a. It'll be. That will a, be a, a weirdly. Cha- I reckon that'll be a close game. Well, you've actually brought it full circle, boys, because I was just going to ask for predictions for round three. So, Simon, we'll start with you. England versus Wales. Wales, uh, twenty-one. England, twenty. Boo. Okay. Okay. Hard. Um, England eighteen, Wales twelve. Oh, that's tight as well. That's tight as well. Um, Sean, Ireland, Ireland, Italy. Um, Ireland forty, 
Italy, 15. Fair enough. Um, Scotland, France. Um, France, 50. Okay. Scotland, nil. As I said, I'm Welsh again, boys. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've got a really funny feeling it's going to be 2017 again. Like that's going to be the story of of this of this tournament that either Scotland score 20 and concede 17, or the other way about. Mm. So. I don't know, it's going to be close. And France, we've kind of had France's number the last few years. So I'll, I'm back, I'll back my team any day. So Scotland, oh, we'll go Scotland 22, France 16. You're confident. I am confident. I know, what we, I know the mistakes we did against Wales. And I know that the same mistakes won't happen twice. And you're at home. But because, and we're at home. And mm-hmm. if this was a Scotland team even two years ago, the mistakes we did against Wales would creep up on us again. And yeah, no, we're done with that. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a good game. I think I think England will beat Wales. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying we're, we're I'm not, not saying we're... Anymore, what? We're not friends anymore. Can I get that on right then? No, oh, okay. <laughs> we're um, going to now for you, boy. That's fine. Um, no, I, I don't think Wales being strong was a fork. Absolutely not. But I just think England's starting to click a bit more. And they've... I don't know. I don't really have my reasons. I just think it's going to be close. England-Wales are, is usually close. For the most part, but I, I just think Except for 2013. Good. Apart from that, yeah, apart from that one, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> apart from 2013, aye. But an eye on that, as I'm not even. That's not even a question, is it? Yeah, Italy's gonna win. Obviously, come on. This is the redemption arc. Obviously, the guy's scoring a hat trick, boy. That's just. I mean, he did score his first international try against Ireland. Right, so. Uh, Indy Viva, Viva. Indy Viva as well. So. yeah. Who knows? But funny. yeah, there we go. That is that was round three. Um, back to club rugby next very week. Quick announcement. Very quick announcement to make before oh, no. we finish. Um, as much as I love doing all of this and the TikTok and everything, I am sadly going to have to take a step back from all of this TikTok podcast, the whole shebang, uh, until for the next wee while for personal reasons. But I will be back, and I will be back to bully you all about when Wales get your one-off defeats against yours but Dioch and Barry Allen, thank you very much thank you boys we love you yeah we love Bye. you thanks I know I know we get you stuck but we, we do love you we do love you deep down wonder fucking Welsh mm, anyway, not, that, anyway. not that much <laughs> yeah. anyway this has been round two of Rugby Connection Six Nations review Back to club rugby next week, like I said, but we'll be back again for round three and we will see you there. Wonderful.